Hey guys, it's Dory from Builder Up Boss. I just wanted to hop on really quick and tell you guys about our, um, our Shopify checklist because it's a little different than other people's Shopify checklist because it caters to the handmaker, to the hustlers, <laughs> specifically to the hustlers and Builder Up Boss. So um, I'm just gonna quickly go through the checklist. Of course, there are things not on this checklist that you will have to go and perfect or make sure is done properly. Of course there are. But the most important key things are going to be part of this list so you can at least get all of your products going, make sure it looks nice, and get to selling stuff because if you're not selling stuff, then you're not in business. Period. End of story. So, step one. Get your free trial. Uh, if you do not build with a Shopify expert or partner, you will have to have a free trial. There will be a free trial link right below that will get you 14 days. 14 days is more than enough with this tutorial. Without it, you're going to be a little lost, um, but you'll be able to navigate and figure it out. It took me 16 full days, and this was um, two and a half years ago when Shopify was really hard to understand, and I was moving from Etsy and a couple of other platforms. I was on several different platforms, um, Store Envy, Big Cartel. They all came up short, and uh, my friend at River Babe Threads, Kendra, decided to tell me about Shopify, and I loved it. So if you're going to do the 14 day trial, I think you're more than capable with all the help that is here on the, on the World Wide Web now, especially with this video right now. So get your free trial. There's a 14 day trial here. Number two, buy your domain. Why do we spend money to buy a domain? I am never one to tell you to spend money unnecessarily. I am the cheapest person you'll ever meet. I say it over and over again. Look at this crazy mess behind me. This is real life. Um, it's so nice to just beat out your competitors. And I've told you guys, if you're part of Builder Up Boss, I've told you guys that your competitors will use your domains against you. We currently have somebody doing that with us because we weren't smart enough to do that. So buy your domain name, whatever your shop is. Ours is the Baby Bird Boutique. We own the babybirdboutique.com. We do not own babybirdboutique.com. And it's biting us in the butt. So that comes to my second point of number two. We'll call it 2B. Buy domains that are similar to your domain. So for us, it would be Baby Bird Boutique. Um, really, that's the only one I can think of that I would really want. You, you can do the .nets and the stuff, but here I am telling you. So sorry, guys. I'm positioning you in a way that you only see my office because my office is joint to my um, home as well. It's a little uncomfortable, but I'll get it figured out for you guys. I just, I really wanted this to be up for you guys because I know so many of you guys are moving over to Shopify and you really need this. I'm not going to tell you to unnecessarily buy like the .co, the .net, the .org because I'm not one to tell you to buy money. The most used is .com. You know that. I know that. GoDaddy has a 99 cent sell every now and then. Shopify actually gets you a domain. I have no idea what the price is because I've never done it. But it's easier that way. Normally, the most money you'll spend on GoDaddy will be like 15 bucks. I think our renewal was 15 and I have a, a privacy setting on it so people can't go in there and see who owns everything and they can't contact us and spam us and things like that. 15 bucks. Um, number three, load all of your products. Let me say this again. This is step number three. You are going to start your trial. You are going to buy a domain. You are going to do nothing else until you load all of your products. Load all of your products. I cannot say that loud enough, strongly enough, and make that point come more across. Here's why. And this is exactly what I said. You can perfect your copy and your photos later because if you have like a photo that's not great, oh my gosh, I can't open. This one photo is so ugly and I would rather have it this way or that way. You are stealing. You're robbing money from yourself. Um, it's just silly. Just get it out there. You are not a shop until you have a shop, until you have a website. Um, if your products are not all there, we can't buy what you have, number one. Number two, if you need help, none of us can help you because only you know your shop. Even if I was a diehard customer, I don't know the way you want your shop to be perceived unless I can see a clear path of all of your products there. So if you ever need anyone for help, and a lot of you guys hire me for help, I tell you, hey, 
you're wasting my time, all of your products are not loaded, I'm gonna check back with you in a few days. Because I can't do anything efficiently. There's no reason that I would ever start building your website before I see all of your products. And I might, I might just throw a layout on there and move things around, but it's going to drastically change. So I'm going to be doing it again once all of your products are loaded because then I have the clear picture. Do not focus on anything else. Don't even click another button besides the product button until every single product is loaded. I don't care about shipping weights. I don't care about uh, what else is there? Your inventory right now, we, you can go back and do that on, under bulk editor. I don't care about shipping weights. I don't care if your copy sucks right now. I don't care. I need to see what the product is. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need. I need a picture of it and I need a title. That's it. That's all I need. Later on, you can go in and add all your variants. This actually comes in different. Actually, you should probably do your variants now. If it comes in different colors and different sizes, we probably need to know that as well. Shipping can be done in bulk. Inventory can be done in bulk. Your copy can be changed later and copy pasted when we do your SEO and stuff. You have to get the products up. Number three is the most important and might be the most time consuming if you don't find a really good way to import it. <sighs> Number three just took the life out of me. Okay. Number four, and do not move on to number four until all of your products are loaded that you want to launch with. If you think I'm going to drop something in two weeks, don't you effing dare wait two weeks. Then you go, here's the list of the shit I want to add in two weeks. Let's launch with what I have now. Then we'll be back at square one. But that's, that's okay. That's easier to integrate a new collection or a few new products than waiting so long also. So there's a balance there. Number four, you're gonna make collections. So under your product tab, there's going to be a way to make a collection and this is a group of products and it's totally up to you the way you wanna do it. The way our company goes is that we have each type of item. So we have rompers, dresses, bloomers, peplums. I don't know what else we have sometimes. Sometimes we have crazy things. Um, each of those, then we have subcategories. We have our solid collection. We have our Easter collection. We have our spring collection. So then we have subcategories as well. And it's up to you the way you want to sort them. If you want to make the subcategories in the main categories, if you want to make those and then put the other categories in, or if you just want to have them all listed out. We have them all listed out because it gives people more ways to shop. They can click at Easter and it'll still show them the rompers and the dresses and the things. They can just look at dresses. They can just look at the, just don't get carried away. I will link a TJ Macedas video below to tell you a little bit more about that too. Don't get carried away, but give them enough options to shop. Once you make your collections, you're going to go in. This is still number four and click all of the products that go to that collection. You can do it in bulk. I think it shows 50 products per page. So you click all of your rompers. Add to, you're going to click edit add to collection, boom. Then all of your spring stuff, everything, add to collection. And you're gonna keep going, going until that's done. That's still number four. Once you have all of that done, then you're going to make pages. Stay with me here, okay? Number five is pages. Your pages are going to be things that are extra, right? Your frequently asked questions, your contact form, your wholesale form, if you want a wholesale form, it's so easy to make a contact form. You literally start a new page, you title it wholesale, you might write a little spiel about, you know, shoot us a message and we'll send you a line sheet. I'm about to tell you about a free app. It's called Wholesale Line Seat Sheet Generator and you just click what you want, you give it a discount and it sends a PDF to your desktop and you can email it to those wholesale customers. Once you have just wrote you what you want, so you called it wholesale and you wrote whatever you want, Go to the right, right here, and it's going to have a little click down box and you're just gonna press contact us. It's gonna make a contact form underneath that so when they email you, it'll say customer inquiry slash wholesale. So you already know what they want. You already know what they want. Press save and then go and create the rest of your pages. You can have a meet the maker. I love calling. I don't like calling it about us because it's, it's really, if you're making your own products or you are the reason behind your products at least, because at this point I don't do a ton of production, although you can't tell but from the mess behind me, um, you still wanna meet the maker because I'm still the creator of the products, even though we subcontract to people who help us sew the products now. 
Um, so all of that stuff, any kind of page you can think of, we even have a page that just says like join our VIP and it automatically takes you to our Facebook VIP page because you guys, you guys know that those are great. Create all of your pages. So you have your collections created in your products. You have all of your pages created. Do that first. I'm telling you guys the way of the order to be efficient. So we're ready for number six. Number six is navigation. You will hit the, uh, online store tab at the bottom of your dashboard. And then whenever you click online store, it'll give you a whole bunch of options. Uh, that's where your pages will be too, by the way, whoops. You're gonna click navigation. Navigation is the way that your pages and your collection show up on your front end. I will give a cheat in the comments below. It's a really weird cheat because Shopify just changed the way that it works. They used to auto import from when you created them onto your front end and they no longer do that. So now you have to manipulate the navigation of your menus on Shopify. It's fine, it's super easy once you know how to do it, I promise. It's going to look like rocket science at first. And then you're gonna do it and you're gonna go, oh, that's how. <sighs> um, so that's easy. It's just manipulating how the front end menus look. Your footer, your header, your menu, your shop, your pages, and what order they come in and how they look. So we're on to number seven. Yay! Now under online stores, you get to go into the themes category. We're going to pretend that this doesn't look like this and we're just going to keep talking about Shopify. You're going to go into online stores and then you're going to go into themes. It's going to give you debut automatically. There are very few, I would say maybe once, and I think I've done like almost 70 site builds at this point. I'm currently working on six. I think that will be right at 70 or 69 or 70. I think there's one time that we used debut and it was okay. Do not use debut. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to explore themes. You can pay for themes. Here's my opinion on out of the sandbox, Hulk theme, things like that. All of these people are Shopify partners like myself. I'm not hating on these people whatsoever. What I am saying is that you will have to wait for their support and rely completely on those subcontractors that run that brand to fix anything in your theme, if anything breaks or if you mess anything up. If you have a Shopify free theme or a theme through Shopify, they will do it right away because it's, it's Shopify has a much bigger people. Uh, what am I trying to say? Why are the words not coming to my mouth? Um, Shopify has more uh, workers for them basically. So they will fix your problems quickly your themes get updated more often. Um, it's just, it, it integrates automatically because it was made for that, things like that. I love free themes because I'm cheap, but also they have a couple of amazing free themes. And what I found is that even when I paid for themes, I could manipulate the paid themes less. And I really wanted to tweak just like one thing, one thing is all I needed. And I didn't want to code for something I spent $200 on. So if I can just go back and get a free theme and have a coding friend co and I give them $200, then it's exactly what I want. That's my two cents. Take it or leave it. Anything I ever say is subjective, even the way that I'm doing the Shopify checklist. However, I have done many Shopify builds at this point and I found a very efficient way of doing things. My favorite go-to themes are pop. If you do not have a vectorized logo, However, um, pop would be a great option if your logo is not vectorized or you need your logo completely separate from your photo. So the way that I like to optimize the shop is I like for the menu to go here or here, if it makes sense to go here over whatever photo you have. I want like the most bomb ass photo that you have that represents your brand. There are balls flying through my front yard. Um, Mom life. <laughs> There are uh, like the, the photo that just captures your brand and it can change. Mine changes seasonally or just whenever I want it to change. Um, but it just really speaks for your brand at that moment. That should be your very front picture. And you should either have your vectorized logo over it or if you go with pop, you can put it over here to the left where your, where your menu is. And then next, you're going to want all of your collections, all of the ways to shop. So under your theme, when you manipulate it, that would be, so you're going to basically just wipe everything that it comes with, kind of.
kind of. <laughs> and I have a video below that can help you build your theme and make sure that it carries over if you want to look up to um, different themes, you know, if you want to try a couple of different themes out. So all of your shop mm -hmm. categories, your collections, you're going to want to make sure you're renaming the titles of those too, because if they just say catalog and collection, I know that you didn't spend enough time on your website and you don't really care. So don't do that. Take the extra two seconds it takes. Um, then next, I really like to have some sort of rich text. It needs to be your meet the maker, or it needs to be a really good hard hitting spiel about your brand and why I'm shopping with you and not someone else. And then below, I want your best category. It could be your Easter line. If you just, if you just released spring or Easter goodies, um, like it could be what's new or it could be what's on sale, or it could just be, I know for sure that I sell a shit ton of this product and that's the collection that goes down there. Or even maybe just one product and a couple of different variants of it. Honestly, if I put at the very bottom of our screen, just black romper, cream romper and plum romper, people would love it and they would sell more. I know they would. I do what's new and then some days I do what's on sale. I change my theme a lot because I want my front end to be the most optimized and easy to shop for ever. So that gives you a little bit of what to do and I'm not gonna talk too much about manipulating your theme. Um, I love Pop, I love Brooklyn. There's a couple of others that are okay. Those are just my two go-to and they almost work for everybody. Uh, I would say almost 50-50 what I've used besides Brooklyn and Pop. It just depends on how strong your brand is and your story is. If you have a stronger brand and story, I love Brooklyn more. I have animals and children coming in everywhere. Um, if you have, if you just sell things and you don't have a really, really, really strong brand yet, I would go with Pop because it looks amazing and it's super easy to shop from. And then, you know, you just mess with whatever you want to mess with. I have a video below to help you. So now we are on to, that was number eight. Number eight was build your theme. So I kind of combined number seven and number eight. So number nine is adding sales channels. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing of Shopify, I have so many people tell me, I can't afford $30 a month, you're lying, because you're gonna get so much free stuff that it is going to pay for itself a million times over. Do not get Starbucks. I get Starbucks once or twice a week. If I cut that out, it would pay for my Shopify right there. But now I'm making so much money on Shopify that I get my Starbucks again, now three times a week. Um, so you're gonna wanna add your sales channels. The sales channels that I have, I have a POS. So if, I, um, if I'm in person, I can run their credit cards. You don't even need a scanner. You can type it in, don't flip out, but they do give you free scanners and they have free chip readers now. It's amazing, it's incredible in Shopify. I'm bowing down to you as always because you're always the pioneers in everything that you do and I love it so much. Um, even if you don't have a chip reader, we have multiple devices when we do shows. So my 15 year old daughter will be punching in people's credit card numbers while I'm swiping the regular reader and my husband's doing the chip reader because that's how busy we get sometimes. Um, so just know that you have options. They can all be, um, logged into your POS on your app. Everybody can do that. Your tablets, your phones, your whatever you have. Um, and it's super easy to use. So that's the number one channel I have. I have my Facebook channel turned on so that on our Facebook business page, they can shop right underneath it. And that I can pro tag the products in my photos. I have, um, messenger turned on. If you don't have messenger turned on, you are really shooting yourself in the foot. Even if you don't use Messenger and you're not answering questions all the time on there or checking it a lot, they really love it for order notifications. They don't really look at their emails. Some of those people don't. So to get it in Messenger and be like, your order just shipped, your order's on its way, your order has arrived in Facebook Messenger, they think you are the coolest thing ever and you do none of it. Shopify does it all for you. It's like having an extra assistant for nothing. Pinterest is the next one that I love a lot. The other ones are totally optional. You can look into them. We have BuzzFeed turned on and we, it's never been used ever. Um, we have a couple of other things turned on. They've never been used. You can always explore the other sales channels, but beyond that, you don't need any more. What Pinterest does is turn all of your, your um, items into rich pins. So when you or someone else goes to like my shop, the babyboyboutique.com, and they see a product, they can pen it, and when they pen it, it's a rich pen, which means it is the, it's like shopping on your website. It's a product, it's the options, and it's add to cart, and they never have to leave Pinterest to buy from you, and it is incredible. It's amazing. So if you don't have the Pinterest sales channel, download it now. I will say if you have a million variants and you use infinite options, it's not for you unless you really love Pinterest and know that you're gonna make a shit ton of money and you're ready to separate your variants into different listings. 
So that's sales channels. That was number nine. Number 10 is ad apps. The most incredible part of Shopify above anything else besides that they're pioneers and that they're amazing and that we love them so much is the fact that they give you a free app store. The app store is incredible. You just go down to apps. It's on the left side of your dashboard and you can just explore. Some of them are paid apps. Some of them are free apps. I love the free apps the best. Some of my top apps that I love is I love the integration with MailChimp. I love Privy, which is a free middleman pop-up between your Shopify and your MailChimp. So it makes a pop-up and captures the emails and it automatically dumps them into your MailChimp. It's incredible. It's free. I love it. You just need to make sure that you uh, change the behavior of it, that it's never covering your shop menu for desktop view. Because if it's on top, it, it will sometimes cover the menu if your menu is over here. So you might just want to move it over here or you might want to tell them the um, desktop view to be at the bottom. And then for the mobile view, you want to make it top or else it'll cover your checkout for most of your themes. And you want people to check out or you can't make money. Um, so I love Privy. I love MailChimp. I love Shoelace. I have not been using it recently because they went up in price. It's a retargeting app. So if someone comes to your website and they navigate away from it, this, um, this app will automatically make this beautiful ad. You don't do anything and you don't pay them to do it other than a $50 monthly service fee. It used to be $9. And they, when they scroll through Facebook, they see your ad over and over and over again, and they, they get you money back. And it works really well. I would never lie to you guys, and I would never tell you to spend money if you don't have to. It works incredibly well, and we will probably add it, add it back on our website soon. What's another app I love? Wholesale Line Sheet Generator is free, and it just makes a really qu quick, pretty line sheet for you. And, you know, you just save it for, as a PDF on your um, desktop, and you can send it to those people inquiring about wholesale. Hmm. I'm trying to think of any other apps I super love. I love Kit. Kit is free. However, Kit does this weird thing now. It used to let you choose whether you want text notifications or if you wanted them through Facebook Business Manager. I'm not a super big lover of the ad manager and the business manager. They're very confusing for me and they're not super user friendly at all. Even service providers have said these are not easy for people to navigate. It's like so many options and each option has an option inside the option. It's just it's wild. So they'll assume the role of your business and make a business manager account. And then you cannot access your Facebook page through your normal Facebook app like you used to be able to. And um, you have to just be really careful because sometimes they'll try to run ads for you. Don't be scared, by the way. It always asks you and you do have to approve it. What I love the most about the free kit app is that it, seen, it sends these thank you emails. We just got a text just now, so I'll show you. It sends these thank you emails to you. It tells you, let's see if we can get this to actually show you. Hi, Dory. Yesterday, we sold one product to one customer. A thank you email has been sent to that one customer. So if they're a new customer or a second time customer, they get an email and it is a flat out email. It's not beautiful, it's not designed. It looks like you went to Gmail or whatever you have and you pressed compose an email to and you just wrote out, thank you so much. We love your support. Thanks, Dory Kirk. And then you sent it. And I would say at least 10% reply to me and are blown away by it. And it's like, shh, our little secret because I wish I had time to do that. And it's incredible. So your customers feel so valued and it's like you have a free virtual assistant and you didn't have to pay for it. And I love it so much. And I love that Shopify just keeps being a pioneer. I think it's clear by now that I love Shopify. So if anyone was ever wondering, why is she always pushing Shopify? Now maybe you know. So the that was number 10. So number 11 is what I ask is from this point forward to go into a group or even just a friend. If you have a friend that also runs a business or can knows websites even a little if they've just shopped online a lot, send them your website and let them look at it first. Hey, can you stick eyes on my website? We're happy to do it in Builder Up Boss. We do audit swaps where we team up with each other and try to as professionally as possible. I have some instruction videos on how to do this. Look at each other's websites and help optimize it better and let you know what you're missing or if there's any typos. So number 12 is launch. It's time to launch it. You need to create those links. You need to put your domain in all of your social media accounts. You need to send out an email blast and let them know that you have a new website. Uh, maybe run like a little special. 
I know that you guys are not big on giant percentages, but I would do like 30% open sell. Yay. Um, and that's it. If you can think of something that you think that I completely missed the mark, I didn't include this and it was crazy. Of course, you're going to go back and do the shipping and make sure that your shipping is right in all of your settings. Um, so maybe I should have added that as a, as a number, maybe some, maybe eight a, after you build your theme, you need to go back into settings and make sure that all your settings are good. The taxes should automatically, um, I don't know. They should automatically go for you because Shopify just looks at what state you're in. However, I know that we have some international friends in Build Rep Boss. I'm in the dark for you. I don't know anything about your taxes or how they work, but I'm sure that you can find a very easy um, answer because Shopify has been around so long now that there is so much information on it. If you guys have any questions or if you can think of anything that I might have missed, leave comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you guys. Thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to see your Shopify sites.